Rub up your engines! Okay, we got a 2000 Toyota Tacoma, notorious for running forever. This one's got a couple hundred thousand miles on it. It is backfiring sometimes on the highway under load. It pops in the exhaust under his driver's seat. So let's figure out why it's doing it. It says it doesn't happen all the time. It doesn't happen at low speed. All the vacuum lines and everything are on fine. It has no codes. The check engine light isn't on. See how it starts up. Starts up fine. Not for 200,000 miles. Actually, it's a pretty quiet sounding engine. I don't hear any vacuum leaks. Now, our customer only bought it four months ago, used for 2,500 bucks. He didn't know the history of it all. So, the first thing we're gonna do is hook up a scan tool. There are no codes, but that doesn't mean there isn't any information. So, I got the old scan tool, plug it in a data port. I gotta push the Toyota. It's a USA Toyota. Manual selection. It won't do automatic as old as it is. It does communicate slower. <laughs> much slower. Realize these older OBD2s are relatively slower. They got slower processors. They don't work as fast, but you can get some information out of it. Four cylinder engine. There it goes. Okay. And we'll do an automatic scan. Now there's no check engine light. There's the flashing seat belt. That's because I don't have my seat belt on because I'm just sitting here. No codes, but there's still a lot of information. Now we can see here the engine's in pretty good shape. It's got a pretty stable ignition advance. Presently, it's got no misfires. But you can see it's getting a little bit of misfires when I rub it up. We will go back to the misfire count. Then we're gonna do data recording. And we'll take it for a road test. Of course, asking me to drive a car hard is like putting a duck to water, so. There. It's just acting up a little there. It's acting up now. That's good. And you notice the check engine light came on and the overdrive turned off. Often when they act up, it will automatically turn the overdrive off. There it is. Heard the back bar. Now we'll go back and we'll analyze the data. Well, I love it when they act up when I'm driving them because a lot of times they don't. <laughs> I can hear it. Check engine lights on. We'll give it a little up the hill again. It's really running bad. The check engine light's flashing. Let's look at that data. Didn't have a code before, but now it does. Misfire cylinder number two. So we're gonna pull out some spark plugs and check them first. Gives a general idea what kind of shape it's in. Pull the number one out, even though that's not the one that's misfiring. And you can see, it's all worn out. The gap is too high. It's been there a long time. So obviously the spark plugs worn out. That could be the whole problem, but really, the spark plug wires, they could be the problem. When they get old, they get mushy. And they're definitely not the original ones, because the original ones didn't come with these red tops. We're gonna take a gamble and just put spark plugs in. Maybe it's gonna need the wires. We can always add that later. If it runs fine and doesn't act up, we don't care. <laughs> if it does, we'll change the wires next. There's no sense wasting money unless you have to. Now, as you can see here, there's the worn out one with a big gap. There's the new one. You can see the gap here is much smaller. This one is worn out, this one is new. So we'll start by putting four of these babies in. And go from there. Get it nice and snug. You notice it's getting tight, but it still can turn. Now, when it can't turn much, then just a little bit, and that's tight enough. We got to get this intake plastic off, so we can get inside here to get them off. Kind of a nutty design. They could have put it someplace else. No, these are just 10 millimeter. We'll just take them off. And we'll loosen this one up. Now they've been on there a long time, so generally you gotta do some serious wiggling. And some more loosening too. There, we got that one off. Now this one isn't gonna come out straight because it's bolted on. So we'll take the two bolts that hold that and put them over here so we don't lose them. And there's two more up here too. We gotta get that out of the way. Cause we gotta get that hose off too when we wiggle it. We should put enough crap in the way. Uh. All right, part of it. Now we gotta pull the other one off. Woe is me, what a bunch of crap in the way. There, finally. Now we can get the spark plug number two, which actually was the offending one. We don't wanna get confused, so we'll put number one back in here. Then do number two. Duck on there, wiggle them back and forth. And then a lot of times you get one of these pliers, they'll pull out better. Success. Even that's in the way. <laughs> Look at that, that stupid wire's in the way. Now we gotta take one more thing off. 
<laughs> the stupid throttle cable's in the way too. Got a little bit carried away with this. We can't get enough clearance to get the wire out. Either I'm getting weaker, this car's getting strong. <laughs> Whoa, man, that stupid thing is in there. Now we got some room. Let's take the socket in and pull that out. And it won't come out by itself because the end of the socket is falling off. You buy these things with magnets in them, half the time they don't last very long. You can see the magnet's gone. I can't find my magnet on a stick either, so I'm using this little prong job to pick it up. Easier said than done. Oh, almost. There we go. You can see the gap on this one's worn too. It's just flat worn out. All right, now we get to put it all back together again. We'll start with the hardest part. The big old metal. We'll put this in first because these two have to line up. We're going to push. Uh, uh, there. Bottom here. Bolts are holding on. Or in this case, the bolt that holds it on. <laughs> now these are often hard to get on, so we'll open this more. So it'll expand when we wiggle it on. It's old rubber. It doesn't have much expanse left. There. We don't want to break it, so... Then tighten them all up. First finger tight. And the other one. You don't want any air leaks or the mass airflow sensor will give false reading. And we'll put the clamp on this stupid bracket that really doesn't do much of anything but it's there so we'll put it on. Now we'll get them all on tight, so they don't fall off or leak. You want these super tight because they're just wire clamps. It's just a cheaper way to make clamps. The old flat ones, they had gear reductions on them, actually worked better, but they cost more to make, so. <laughs> they all have these cheaper ones on them. Now we'll start her off and clear everything out. wonder what that smoke was well had a little oil leak oil got in the spark plug hole don't be surprised if smoke comes out that oil's got to burn off so i'll get the old scan tool out to take it for a ride we can record the data again to see if there's any problem just plug it in here and take it for a trip now maybe it'll need spark plug wires maybe it won't we'll find out road testing it well i don't feel anything yet we'll take it on a good road test no check engine light flashing we'll take it to our little drag strip in the sky well, we're road testing it. See how it handles? Still handles good for 200,000 miles. Now, this isn't by any stretch of the imagination a racing truck with a four-cylinder engine in it, but we'll take it to our little drag strip here. And there's the start line. And let's see what it can do. Here we go. Well, the check engine light is coming on. It's running fine, shifting through the gears. No hesitation anymore. Looks like we don't have to mess with either the spark plug wires or it could have had weak fuel injectors or even a bad valve in the engine. It's running perfectly fine now. Passing gear works. I definitely said it's fixed. And so what did we learn today? Sometimes even a Toyota will break down. In this case, a simple fix, spark plugs. Now, I'm lazy as can be, so with my fancy scan tool, I can figure it out really fast. But if you didn't have a scan tool, you just have to pull out the one spark plug. You can see the gap is three times what it should be, and then it's worn out. Replace them first. It can be that simple of a fix. And the owner was worried. He thought, maybe the timing chain's so worn. That's why when I accelerate, it hesitates. Well, you can see it's not hesitating. Now, all it was was spark plug. Sometimes it's a simple fix. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.